Hi, today I'm unboxing a uh, 10 inch uh, rock saw, 10 inch uh, diamond blade rock saw. Pretty well packed, it looks pretty secure. Got some paper on top. Take that off. I can see the saw, it's right available. Put that to the side. Got uh, the uh, vise and slide all wrapped with some paperwork. Got the lid with the guard slide into place put that aside got the in let's pull it out let me pull this out I'm going to grab it by the body never grab it by the shaft I'm going to locate the box bring this out. So here's our saw, our motor, the plastic heavy duty body. It'll sit this way. Has direction book with an Allen key. Let me see if I can get that in a spot where it's more visible. Allen key for maintenance and here is a saw blade let me open that up comes with it Nice green saw blade, diamond cut, it's the shaft, it's got some washers and bolt, got a good pan, hold a lot of water, and our shaft. Okay, so Okay, so here's everything that came with the kit. A uh, little piece of paper for that, describing it's a vise. Uh, this is the vise. This will get mounted to the body, heavy duty PVC body. Uh, water well holds a couple of gallons, gallon and a half, something like that maybe. Uh, 1725 RPM, uh, 110 motor, 6.6 .6 amps. Uh, one third horsepower, single phase. The uh, cutting saw that came with it, there's several different sizes. This is uh, what I got. The uh, body that'll go on top of the, the, the top that'll go on top of the body, sorry, uh, drain plug. Two screws on either end with four uh, rubber and heavy duty washers. Uh, uh, guard for a splash. And then I would recommend unscrewing these in advance with something heavy duty like a screw gun. Like so. And now I'm going to prepare to uh, mount the vise onto the body and install the blade onto the shaft. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install the blade. I've got the screw mostly all the way out. Finish that process. 
unscrew that. Slide the brass end off. It's got some uh, grease on the end. We want to be careful not to disrupt that. So I'm going to get as close to the wall of the tub that I can. So I don't disturb that little bit of grease and then get my, oh, sorry, my bad. Got to take off the nut. I'm going to have to remove that grease anyway. There it goes. Take off two washers. Leave two washers. There it is. That grease belongs in here. Lubricant for that. Okay, so now we're going to put our blade onto the shaft, put our two washers back on, put our nut back on. I'm going to give it a good hand tighten and then just a little bit more with the plier, a channel lock plier, just a just enough to make sure it's tight. We don't want to crimp anything or damage anything. Now I'm going to put this back on the way it came off. Nice, it's got a little hole so that it doesn't get stuck and gummed up. Put that screw back in there. Tighten her down. Line it up. Sorry. Tighten her down. Alright. Nice and snug. Not too tight. Next thing. I'm going to put this on top of the reservoir. I'm going to install the clamp device fit right like so. Very close. Alright, we've got two holes. Now I had to already uh, remove, I removed the screws, all four screws already. Uh, they have two washers, rubber and metal, on both pieces. So one washer goes on the inside and one washer on the outside of the clamping bracket. Line that up. Uh, we have to, uh, sorry, I'm going to give these guys a pre-start. These rubber washers are a little bit difficult. They have to be threaded on. Got a little technique to them. And then once that started to be threaded like that, then we can get the other one. Let me get those installed and start it, and then I'll get back. Okay, so I did a little pre-setting up. This stuff was a little difficult. I didn't want to do it all on film. Uh, I put these guys, just started them. It was a little top-heavy here. It was very awkward getting it all started. First couple, as you can see, it still wants to lean out that way. So I'm just going to get it close. And then the washers are each facing with the rubber against the bracket. Okay. Little 
fine tuning. I'll use the handheld. And then it's going to be a matter of observing the slide against the little ridges that are in here because I want to get the straightest cut possible. So I want to bring this just that way a little bit. It's so close. All right, just a hair. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. It looks nice. I'll uh, snug these all down now. By hand. Don't want to strip them out with the power tool. Nice and snug. Just snug. Observe again. All right, I'm happy with that. It's going to take a little bit more adjustment to get it straight, but I'm good with that for now. I have the shield in place, the guard. So here's where the bracket is for the uh, the stones. Unscrew that. these guys in place. I'll get a stone in there. It's got a nice little pad on the inside to grip the stone. A little piece of rubber. Okay, and that's it for the moment. One more. Okay, so I've set it up in its permanent location here. Put a couple of little uh, spacers under this side because the table leans pretty far, so now it's nice and level. I've got some tap water in with just an eighth of an inch covering the blade. You can see it's just barely in there. And I put a little bit of uh, dish soap in there, a little bit of Dawn for lubrication. Uh, I don't want to go with oil or any other chemicals. I think that's probably uh, sufficient, just a couple of drops. It's about a gallon and two thirds of a reservoir to get to that. It's a good size reservoir. Got this uh, all set up and it took a, just another couple of twists and pushes to get this uh, guide nice and straight. So next step is I'm going to uh, put that back on top and put a stone in and we'll see how she goes. Thank you. So now I have it all set up. It took a, about 15 to 20 minutes to figure out how I was going to get this the way I wanted it. So at this point, I'm just going to lop off the end to make it nice and square with what is compatible to the vise. I'm wearing my apron and my visor during this process.
Okay, so that was the first cut on this uh, brand new out of the box rock saw. This is the piece that we cut off. It's just a nice steady pressure that was real time. I wasn't trying to, I'm not looking to uh, over speed anything. Let's see the end, uh, at least not on this project. And who knows what my videography skills will be in the future. Here's the end of that, beautiful. That's what I was looking for, to get a nice clean end. And then uh, from this point on, on this stone, I will slice it this way, along this plane, at six to seven millimeter slices in this vise, which has a uh, ability to slide in and out for uh, the same stone. You could just keep moving it along. Uh, when I first hit it, the blade bent. Whoop. We didn't like that. Uh, the uh, platform here, the top, is very close to this edge of the blade. I'm thinking of relocating one of the washers and going three washers on one side and two on the other at this point. That's what I can see for the hole that's been cut in this device so there's no stress on the blade. Uh, that's my perception at this time. Thank you. Uh, so the water is sudsy from the dish soap which is interesting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry everything off. I'm going to drain the water out and uh, pull this apart and relocate it so there's, uh, like I said, the uh, difference on the washers. Oh, maybe a couple of washers are thinner than others and I'm going to use the thinner ones on that side. So now, after having removed the washers from the uh, blade, I measured them. This is like five and a half millimeters and uh, that was the left side and the right side was basically three millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch them from one side to the other because that's what it looked like to be the difference uh, in the hull of the top plate. So now I'm going to install them like this. The nut came off very nice and easily as expected with just a little bit of slightly more than finger tightening. For this process you want to have a little extra maybe uh, machine grease for the end of the spindle. Again I switched the washers from one side to the other. I'm going to, uh, okay, so also when I took this apart and I pulled the brass off of the shaft, uh, it flexed where it didn't seem to do that the first time. This is after the first use. Uh, so that's why there's, I suppose, the bolt in here and this is what this is for is to stabilize the shaft and there's grease in there and that'll uh, support it. So we'll give a, I'll give feedback on that after a period of time to see if there's a pressure on it. Okay, uh, so I'm going to put the nut back on. That's a tight fit right there between the wall of the tub and the end of the uh, sprocket or spindle. Sprocket. Finger tight and just a little bit more, just a little bit more. Snug it up. Now I'm going to get that on there. It's a, it seems a little bit not so stressed. Line up the hole. We don't want to bottom it out because if we uh, bottom it out you lose a little bit of grease. There's a, a breather hole right there. In case that you do go too deep.
This is a high tech, that's the name brand, high tech diamond, 10 inch saw. So now I'm going to uh, put the top back on and see how that lines up, if it's any better. Oh yes, yes, that's much more centered. I feel more comfortable not having to put shims or adjust this to accommodate the area where the blade is. So that's great. There's still two washers on each side. Again, check the uh, size of the washers all together. Make sure they're even and line them up good with the hole in the plate. I pulled it away from the table and put a bucket under it to collect the water. I'm going to prop it up with a piece of something and get all the water out, wipe it down, get it nice and dry. I want everything nice and dry. I don't want anything rusting. I don't want any moisture in the uh, bottom of the trough to uh, expose itself to the blade and whatnot and the materials. So we want to keep our equipment nice and dry to keep it uh, fresher longer. I have everything covered with a two mil plastic. Okay, so I'm at this point in the video where uh, I've this has come apart. The little plastic knob in the end has uh, come out and it refuses to go back in. That's the only thing that was holding it to the bracket. These brackets are very thin and flexible at the top. So what I'm going to do, uh, this is hollow inside, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a nearby machine shop and have them duplicate this rod with a solid rod and to drill the end so that I can uh, tap it with a uh, uh, a self-tapping metal screw uh, with big washer. I'm also going to have them refabricate uh, brackets that are a little bit more beefy and able to take it when uh, this is not, uh, like I said, in the process of putting it together and taking it apart, this thing flopping around, it's bent the brackets on both ends, and I'm not, not too happy with that. Uh, this seems fine, the blade is fine, everything else seems very good, the structure of the body is great. Uh, again, in the process of making the video, I, I took this off once and put it back on and when I went to screw this in it's got a unique uh, nut type design that almost stripped out uh, so I'll have to find out if that's going to hold up to uh, taking this apart and uh, re-bracketing it if that happens then I'm going to replace that uh, with a just typical uh, nut and wa screw with a washer so that's where we are at that rate. Thank you. So uh, this is my final thoughts on the high-tech diamond saw 10-inch cutting saw. Uh, I'm happy with the saw. It's got a great motor. It came with a nice blade. I cut stone with it, as you saw in the other part. Uh, and today I, I cut this two days ago in half as an experiment. And then today I cut this jar, which was a uh, kind of a, a dip jar, uh, into three pieces. I cut this jar, which is a, a drink jar into three pieces. I cut a, a Grand Marnier bottle into uh, that. This I'm not sure about. This little guy, which has a unique little bulbous shape to it, and then rings, 
which I intend on polishing and cleaning up. Uh, I did this all freehand without the the uh, vice and sliding device. Uh, when cutting glass, here's a piece of advice to everyone out there. Uh, wear long uh, protective sleeves and gloves uh, because the shrapnel coming off the glass is shrapnel and it bit me and uh, you know uh, so it's like nothing else I've ever cut and I've cut uh, metal wood and tile and stone and uh, you know like I said this uh, provides a uh, shrapnel this is a uh, thing I'm going to turn into a mug it came I got uh, I got uh, five rings and the cone part out of that this is a beer bottle back here again I got four rings and that cone shaped part I don't know if I can do anything with that cone parts but who knows what again uh, I put a fan here when I'm using the saw I put a fan on to just keep the motor cool in the book, it's recommended to do that when you intend to use it for long periods of time. But even if I'm just going to use it for uh, one or two cuts, I'm going to turn the fan on and keep the motor nice and cool. Uh, all the time, just to extend the life of it. It's very stable. I'm getting a clean cut off of all the pieces. Like I said, I'm happy with that. I was happy with the cutting the stones. And uh, I'll make a, another video about the uh, bracketing scenario. Thank you.